Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. So in this video, we're going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is, is binary number multiple of three and it is a medium level problem. So I'm finally back at my home and uh, I hope that we did not miss anything interesting. So like I really wanted to not miss even a single day, but uh, I had to. So I was not able to upload the video for the past two days. Anyways, let us quickly start with today's problem discussion. Now this particular problem says that we have been given a number in binary form and we want to find out whether it is a multiple of 3 or not and they are just saying that it is recommended to finish the task using just one traversal of the binary number right. So basically uh, we will have to find out whether this binary number is a multiple of 3 or not in only one traversal right. So this is our whole question and uh, if you have uh, uh, studied theory of computation then you must have already solved this question multiple times because in theory of computation, they ask you to construct a DFA for this particular problem statement. But anyways, let us see how we can solve this particular problem programmatically. So basically, uh, you don't even know, need to know theory of computation for this particular problem. I will tell you a very simple way of uh, understanding this problem statement. So let's say you have any general binary string. So whenever you have a string, let's say we have a string like this, this is 0, 1, so this is equivalent to 5 in decimal, right. Now if you have any string and you want to find out whether it is a multiple of 3 or not, one way is to like take the whole binary string, convert it into uh, in, in, in decimal form and then find out whether it is a multiple of 3 or not. But the problem with this approach in this particular case is it, the value of n or the length of the string is 10 raised to the power 5. So you will not be able to calculate 2 raised to the power 10 raised to the power 5 in any means, right. So this is obviously not something you would want to calculate. So how do we solve this question? So let us understand two types of operation first. So let's say I have a string like this 101. So this is a binary string. What happens if I append a 0 after it? Right. So this is appending 0. Right. So if I am appending a 0 at the end of a binary string, what changes are made to the decimal value of the binary string? Right. So you will realize that this appending 0 is nothing but just left shifting this particular string. So if I take a binary string like this and I left shift it, so it will become this particular string. So appending a 0 at the end and left shifting any binary number is like uh, is actually equal, right? Because the final string that we obtain is the same string. So this string will now become 10 and we can also verify it. So this is 2 raised to power 3 plus 2 raised to power 1 that is 8 plus 2 and it is 10, right. Now what happens when we append 1, appending 1 to the end of a binary string, right. So if this is 1, this is 0, this is 1 and this will become 1. So it is going to be 11. So the difference between these two strings is just the last character. Here it is 0, here it is 1. So here it, if it is 10, here it will be 11. So what we have discovered, what we have discovered from this discussion is if we have a if we have a binary string, right, binary string. Now, if we append, append a 0 at, at the end, then we get the orig, original, original number multiplied by 2, right. So, if we append a 0 at the end of a binary string, we will get the original number in decimal form multiplied by 2, right. Now, if we append a 1 at the end, we, we are, are going to get the original number multiplied by 2 plus 1, right. So this is what we are going to get. So if we know this particular fact, right, if you are already aware of this particular fact, now what we can do is initially let's say we do not take any characters and we have our current value equals to 0. So the current value is going to denote the remainder when divided by 3. So let's say initially the remainder is 0 because we have not taken any like characters till now. So the total sum will always be 0 or the value of the string will be 0 and hence the remainder will be 0, right. 
Now let us start traversing the swing from left to right. So let us consider an example of nine. So this is three, two, one, and zero. So I hope this is nine in binary form, right? So if you take this example, what will happen is, let's say uh, we start traversing from the left to right. Now the initially the remainder is zero, right? When we encounter a one. When we encounter a one, we have discussed whenever we append a one at the end of the string, we're going to get the original number multiplied by two plus one, right? So if we initially had zero remainder, so if you know modular arithmetic, if I if I have some initial value a and I do some operation on it like this, multiplication, addition, or subtraction, right? And I want to find this value, then I can find a mod like this plus b mod like this, and then whole mod, right? Like this. So I am interested in the final remainder value, right? So how do I find it? Initially, my remainder was zero. I know that I am multiplying it by two and adding one to it, and then I want to find the final remainder. So in this case, it is going to be one, right? So now my remainder has become one. Now the next character is zero. That means my binary string was initially one. I am appending a zero after it. If we check the rules, it means that we are multiplying the original number by two, right? So, if my original number was giving me a remainder one, and if I multiply it by two, the final remainder will be this particular value, which is equal to two. And you can also verify it because now we are getting the remainder two, and the original string has become two itself. So, two mod three is obviously two. Now, the next character is zero again. So that means we have to append a zero at the end. That means we are going to multiply the original number by two. So we are currently getting a remainder two. If we multiply it by two and then take mod with three, we are going to get one, which is four mod three essentially, and it is going to be one, right? Here also, if I do this particular operation, this is going to be an overall overall value of four, right? So it is also giving a modulo or remainder of one with three. Now the next character that we have is one, the final character. So my current remainder is one. If I like uh, append one to the end of the string, that means I have to multiply the original number by two plus one. Now, in this case, my current remainder is one. I multiply it by two plus I add one to it. Now I take mod three. Now this is going to be zero, right? So this is going to be my final remainder. Here also, if you see, if I append one to it, this is going to be nine, and my mod three value is nine mod three zero. So at the end, if after traversing the whole string, if my current value becomes equal to zero or the remainder value becomes equal to zero, that means the answer is true. That is, the current binary string is a is a multiple of three. Otherwise, the answer is false, right? So we can just return current equals to equals to zero. So that is it about today's problem of the day. Now let us have a look at the code. The code is very simple and straightforward. I initialize my current value, so this is going to store my current remainder, right? Now I just traverse the string and I multiply the current value by two. Now I am adding this particular value. So what is this? Uh, I have taken the character current character and I am subtracting the character value of sky value of zero from it. So if it is zero, this this whole expression. If the current character is zero, the whole expression is going to return zero, and if it is one, the whole expression is going to return one. So this is exa exactly what we want to add in our this particular value, current into two, right? At the end, I can just take mod three, and after I've traversed the whole string, I can just return current equals to equals to zero. Now let me just show you, and so by submitting this code, that this approach works, and uh, you will see that it passes all the test cases, and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Any general thing you would like to share about the question or any other thing because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos and don't subscribe yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.